All right, good evening, everyone. Today is July 26th, and I can hardly believe it is, this day is here. I was, uh, I was asked by my mentors, our mentors, to do this about a month ago or, or more. And it was one of those moments where you just say yes. You just say yes, and then you figure, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to step up and do this. So I appreciate all of you tuning in tonight. It is such an honor to be presenting some information, some training information to people who I really look up to. All of you on here are my teachers. So feeling a lot of gratitude in that regard. So once again, if you've just hopped on, please be sure to mute yourself so I don't have to, um, to be looking too far around the screen. But for those of you that don't know me, my name is Issa Dinerman and short for Isabella. And I am up here in Prescott, Arizona. And I've been a part of Life Vantage for almost three years. August 25th will be my three year anniversary. And I can say it's been the most fulfilling, um, I don't even call it a job. I call it just a, a, you know something that I fell into literally, but you know with a lot of intention. Then the intention was there. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that as we talk about an avatar, but I always had a very strong intention at, at being an entrepreneur and wanting to make a difference in people's lives. And so when Marisa Harrelson introduced this to me, um, you know, about seven years ago now almost, and I was intrigued by this information, but I didn't say yes right away. And, you know, I had some growth to do and some, some tying up to do with my businesses. I own two skincare companies, one up here in Prescott and one in Flagstaff. And I realized quickly on, I didn't know what was missing in my businesses, but now I know it was leverage. And that was the key difference. So I'm a skincare practitioner. I am an esthetician and I love working on my clients, but I realized that I made money when I was in the treatment room. And although we had a heavy retail base in my store, we sold a cosmetic brands that were um, that were exclusive at the time these distributorships did exclusive territorial rights and I had some really big brand names and Over the course of those those 10 12 years. I started to see sales shifting to online and People were going directly to the website not wanting to even park I remember hearing that from clients. I can just I don't need to get out of my car I can have it shipped right to my house and so I started to see business change and I started to realize I need to step back a minute and reevaluate and figure out how can I be an entrepreneur and and do it on my terms. And so when Marisa introduced this to me, it wasn't until four years after that that I was doing yoga retreat in Costa Rica and I overheard from a guest on my retreat. You're going to need to mute everybody. People okay. are coming on and they're not muting themselves and they're and it's really unfortunate. All right, let's see. Great. All right, I'm not sure how to do that, Marisa. Oh, yes, you can. Go to click on participate. Oh, there we go. Okay. There you go, babe. Everybody's muted. Okay. So anyway, I was in Costa Rica, overheard a guest speaking about the ABC and about oxidative stress and about you know, aging and, and different things, very health-minded individual. And I was intrigued and I reached out to Marisa and I said, is this what you were showing me four years ago? And she said, yes. And I said, well, my goodness, I'm, this is really resonating with me. So timing is everything. But I will tell you that when I think back to that time, Marisa knew exactly what she was looking for. She knew my pain points. She definitely knew them and she became a friend and she checked in with me and spoke to me she knew I had become a mom at about 42 years old and she would check in on my daughter and this and that. She knew that I was trying to find my way here into entrepreneurship. And so it just takes time guys, but relationships are key. That's what we're, that's what we're really stressing here. So that's my story of how I came into Life Vantage. It's been the most amazing journey ever since. I, I still teach aerial yoga up here in Prescott, although our studio is still closed right now. And I still do maintain a, a few uh, facial clients that, um, it's, it's like family, right? It becomes like family. So what we're talking about tonight is our ideal builder. And many of us focus on our customers, right? We focus on who we want as a customer, but how many of you on here have asked yourselves that you, you know, would you like to take your business to another level? Is this a business? Is this something that you are growing to become something more? And if you are, we need to develop leaders and we need to find builders. So I am speaking to men and women on here tonight, I realize that, but I am going to say that 
in our in in what I'm going to speak about the generalities I'm speaking about women here so you're going to hear me talk a lot about women but it, this does apply to both okay but most women are more comfortable selling product over ourselves or over the opportunity because when we start talking about the opportunity we're selling ourselves we're selling you know true recruiting is saying I will be your leader and I'm going to show you an opportunity and I'm going to show you the way. Follow me, take my hand, right? So most of us are more comfortable telling people about a product and sending a video. But when you're really selling yourself, this has to be through your intentionality and what you're seeking also, because we're going to talk about that. What you're seeking and what you're focusing on is exactly what you're going to attract. So uh, a common misconception in network marketing in our company or in our business is that we want everyone in our business, right? And many of you have heard Several of our trainers say we don't want everyone in our business, but we don't want to recruit everybody, but we want to develop people who want to be developed. People that you, they say, teach me, teach me, be my teacher, I'm coachable, and you will show them the way. So we're looking at a target market. So who is it that has what we want to be a business partner? So many of what I'm, much of what I'm going to refer to tonight is by Deb Erickson, and she is a, a coach, a neuroscience coach. And, you know, you can go to her website, ICANinstitute.com for inquiries or more information about this. But this is where I'm, I'm gathering some of my personal information from a previous marketing company that I worked with when I was developing my yoga brand. And then this is Deb Erickson. So Deb has a great analogy about fishing, right? So if you wanna catch rainbow trout, I love this analogy. You wanna catch rainbow trout and you go down to Florida and you hire you know, a fisherman or a fishing boat to take you out into the middle of the ocean and you just throw bait out randomly and you start fishing. You're going to be very disappointed, right? And the reason is because rainbow trout aren't found in the ocean. They are found in the streams. They're found in freshwater streams. They don't live in the ocean. So you have to know who you are looking for. Where do they live? Where do they play? Many of us, um, now that we're building more on social media in this time, you know, what groups are they involved in? What are their interests? And that's what we're looking at. And I just had the pleasure of being in a training uh, online with Eric Worre recently. And Eric talked about this curve or this graph of sales and leadership. And if you can imagine that my top hand or this hand being sales, and we can recruit customers and we can increase our sales, but this is leadership down here. And if we're not recruiting and developing leaders, eventually our sales are going to come down to meet that level of leadership. We want to rise the leadership up and see the sales go up together. So that's really interesting. We want to create that gap when it's when, or we want to close that gap when we see that it's created and build the gap, fill the gap and repeat. So this is a constant development. And I'm sure many of you that have been doing this for a while know that. So this is our business. Excuse me. This is our business. And we have to think of it as such, guys. This isn't a thing. This isn't a hobby. If people say to me, how's that little thing going that you're doing? I'm very quick to correct them and say, oh, my global business is going great. You know, so own it. This is our business. Be intentional. Who do you want to attract? Who do you want to travel with when we can all travel again? Who do you want to chat with every week? You know, touching base with your leaders is a regular thing. So be open and thinking about all of these questions. So I'm going to open a very simple PowerPoint uh, right now and just show you a few slides of things that we look at when we are thinking about this. Okay, so identifying our ideal ideal business builder, okay? So first we're looking at, we're looking at three main things. The first thing is demographics. What is their age? So being non-specific, guys, many of you might look at this and say, I don't want to be that specific because I don't want to exclude anyone. But being non-specific doesn't do any good. It doesn't recruit anybody because you, and I'll tell you why, it's that intentionality that we're going back to. So being non-specific, doesn't attract anything really. Age has to have a target. For example, a 70 year old has different pain points than a 25 year old, right? Base it on life focus. So age isn't necessarily as important as life focus. And you can have a mom, for example, a stay at home mom in the age of 25 to 40, you know, 25 to 40, 45. And she has more of a health focus. She's focused on getting healthy 
and you know having more energy you know for her children or perhaps that same age bracket 25 to 40 might be a working mom that wants more time at home or perhaps that same age bracket is a successful career woman who just doesn't own her time and she's tired of other people defining her worth and her value or maybe you're looking at a young professional um, 21 to 30 years old, you know, or a 45 year old who's moving into empty nest syndrome. That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. I have a nine year old. <laughs> so, um, but questioning what their next step in life is, or someone who's 55 or older, and they're really looking into retirement and reevaluating their financial scape and seeking ways to provide value. Many people right now, everyone, don't underestimate people that are looking for purpose. People are looking to provide value in their community because they know that there are many people hurting and they want to make a difference. So each pain point or each problem has a different age bracket that goes with it. So can you have more than one avatar? Yes, you absolutely can. So you can create a unique one to about three people. I would, Deb Erickson as well says, no more than three people, because then you can really get confused here. So three personas. And I was thinking about this, can a man create an avatar of a woman? Absolutely. And we're giving you the tools here to do that. So I invite you, if you're a man to, you know, ask a woman that you know well, you know, or someone who fits a lot of these, you know, what would she answer to many of these questions? and build that avatar. So marital status, and this has more to do with just support, right? Or, or um, what, again, what their pain points are. Um, the income of the household, and this can include disposable income. And that just means um, disposable income. Do they have money to buy product? Do they have money to support you know, their business um, and different needs that come up, training and different things like that. And then work experience and title. You know, Are you looking for someone who's brand new in the work market or someone who is experienced. You know, for, for me, uh, my avatars tend to look at, I look at people who are in, I'm in wellness and I do wellness retreats. So I'm looking at people who work for hotels and in spas, estheticians, massage therapists, um, travel agencies right now, right? Or any, any of these industries, yoga. So, and years of experience, are they established or are they new? What type of community do they live in? And that to me says a lot about, you know, who they are, right? People who say, I live in a place with a clubhouse and we have, you know, just different community events and things like that versus someone who's more isolated. So then we get into psychographics and this is where we look at the person's psychology and what are their fears, what are their frustrations, what are their pain points, and notice how these many times are related to the demographics. So you'll start to see a correlation here. So psychographics, what are their wants, their needs, their hot buttons, what do they find overwhelming? You know, maybe it's, you know, too much time at home, you know, if they're a stay-at-home mom and they want something to get out and do or to socialize in a different way. What mechanisms do they use to cope? You know, are they someone who's, you know, at the gym a lot or they're running all the time or they're, you know, exercising, cooking, different things like that. Do they have coping mechanisms that connect them to people? And then what would their ideal world look like? These are all questions that I know you've asked yourselves. And these are things that we're looking at when we're developing this avatar. And then lastly, positive qualities. You know, we're focusing where our attention goes, energy flows. So many people focus on what we don't want in a business partner, but what we need to focus on is what we do want. Because if you focus on what you don't want, you're going to see every potential business partner as having those qualities that you don't want. It's, it's kind of just happens that way. So we're focusing on what we do want. And that tends to be, you know, we're looking at personality traits. Do you have someone who's happy and who's positive? Someone who wants to grow personal development? Um, who has a big why, their desire or their why or their commitment level? Are they wanting to start something and do they have that stick to that this takes? Um, resources, time and money and support. And support can just be not just, um, not just a partner, not just your, your husband or your wife or your family, but it can be a sphere of influence, people in their lives that are, that are they're part of something. Are they coachable? Are they teachable? And we know that these are, are huge. And those coachable and teachable people, can they just step in and mimic your level of leadership or start to, and then they can develop a little bit more. And then of course, there's mental and emotional maturity. We, we want people who are, um, 
who are, are mature, you know, and they're willing to recognize what's theirs, what isn't theirs, and, and move on from there. So uh, I'm going to just tell you, when I started my, when I sold my businesses, my skincare businesses, and I started um, this yoga retreats, uh, Aerial Yoga, I had a marketing company develop a brand for me and it was all centered around yoga because I wasn't doing network marketing then. And my, you know, my target audience, I pulled this up today, the market research, they gave me, you know, women who are interested in yoga, primarily 30 to 70 years old. Um, they're e they either uh, are on or have just begun a journey towards self-care, wellness, and wholeness. They're open to travel and new experiences. Um, they may struggle with balancing at all, you know, just different things here. I won't read the whole thing, but these women were good that did this for me because they focused on pain points, but it was a very general, that's a huge age gap, right? The problems or the, the pain points of a 30 year old are very different than that of a 70 year old. So anyway, just something to consider there. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples here, and um, I want you to just think about, you know, what it is that you want. And remember, we're not sticking all of these positive qualities or all three of these main points into one avatar, right? So we're going to just skip here to, this is Maria Williams' avatar, and her name is Kate. And you can see here, she's 35 to 55. She is college or street smart. We, you know, I think that's great because many people are very successful and have, are just street smart. Um, married with supportive husband, middle school kids are older, 200,000 a year plus household income, 15 plus years professional leadership role, including network marketing. Um, and you can read on and on here, coachable, self-motivated, leader, wellness-minded, driven, visionary, competitive, and spiritual. Who does that sound like? It sounds like Maria, doesn't it? So if you, I don't know if um, where Maria posted this, but soon after Maria created this avatar, Kate, she met a woman who joined her business and she looked a whole lot like this person, a whole lot like Kate. So Deb talks about that too, how once we put this into a visual, and I'm going to tell you how we do that in just a moment you're going to start to meet that person. You're going to see them everywhere. You're going to see different Kates around you, right? So after we create this avatar, again, we're not sticking all these qualities into one, but we are going to create a script that speaks to their pain points, right? We're creating different scripts for different people. So this is one of my avatars. Her name is Lucia, Lucia. And um, I used to live in Spain. I'm bilingual. So uh, I really love to develop my my company, my life managed business in Spanish speaking countries. So Kate or Lucia is bilingual. She has an advanced education. She's married. She wants a family. She doesn't have kids yet. She loves to travel. She wants a global business. Very strong work ethic. Leader. Loves people. Resourceful and loves personal development. After I wrote this about Lucia, I realized that sounds a lot like me, <laughs> you know, um, my husband and I were married 10 years before we had our daughter, you know, and I, and I was doing all of these things here. So really interesting how, you know, you're going to find as you create this, that you'll find many of your qualities going into this. So, and then this is Janet. I love this. I have, I have three avatars. This is Janet and Janet is 60 to 75 years old. She's divorced. She's a retired teacher. She's very financially comfortable and she craves a sense of purpose. She seeks to find ways to feel more vital. She enjoys volunteering, yoga, wellness retreats, art, and cooking. So I took this a step further and I wrote a little bit about Janet. I just thought it would be fun to show you, take your imagination in, you know, what are you, who is this person? Who is this person? Get specific. So, you know, I don't need to read all of this, but I wrote a little script about Janet and how she, you know, is a retired teacher. She lives a modest lifestyle so she can spend money on travel, which she does frequently, both alone and with friends. She loves learning and exploring. Um, she loves history. She volunteers as an adult tutor at the Howard Area Community Center and Open Books in Chicago. And she suffered from back pain, chronic back pain most of her adult life and has developed arthritis. And she finds that eating well and partaking in low impact exercise, especially yoga, aerial yoga, um, helped her. And she has a strong desire for community and wants to make a difference in the lives of others. And this is, this is something that I just did to take it a little bit further. You winning your games, girl? Example. So 
once that we have identified our avatar, we're going to create a script for each avatar. I'm going to stop this screen share now. We're going to create a script for each avatar, identifying their pain points. And then where do we find them? Where do we go? Where is Janet? Where is Lucia? Where is Kate? And so, like we said, um, we're moving into recruiting once we've identified them and we know where to find them. So I might look, if I'm looking at someone like um, Lucia, for example, I'm looking at um, bilingual groups on Facebook. I'm looking at um, graduates of the school of the university that I attended in Spain. You know, I'm, I'm looking at people that are working in the medical field or, um, you know, just, just different things, entrepreneurial people. So, and this is where we build the visual. And for the ones that you just saw here, we've used Canva. Maria used, I believe Maria used Canva, and that's what I used and Marisa used as well. And we create a visual for our brains to recognize this person. It's one thing to have this written down on paper, and it's another to really have a visual. And we'll tell you exactly why that is important. We want to recognize her. We are training our brains to recognize there she is. Because I can guarantee if you start to get specific about what you want and you have that visual, you're going to start to see people that, that are mirroring that right back at you. It's incredible. And this has to do with that filter between the conscious and the subconscious. And our subconscious minds can process billions of bits of information right? But our conscious minds, the decision-making part of the mind can only process hundreds. So what we want to do is filter out and focus on the critical info of who we're looking for. And what we focus on makes it through the filter. What we don't focus on doesn't. So if we focus on people who complain, who don't do what they say, who are, um, you know, always complaining about something, I know it is amazing, Elva, how our brain works, yes. Um, if we're always focusing on that, our subconscious mind is going to find people like that everywhere. And you're going to find yourself saying, I knew it. I knew no one liked network marketing. I knew no one was going to listen to me as I did this career change. Um, I knew my family wasn't going to be on board with this. So instead, focus on what you do want. And when we say, I know exactly what I'm attracting, I'm, I'm attracting committed, driven, entrepreneurial, curious and teachable people, that's exactly what you're going to find. So when we talk, again, when we focus, when we, what we talk about, we will see everywhere. So you, um, and I just wanted to say here, are you listening guys? I just gave you an example. Um, are you listening to people? This is where asking those questions comes in to play when we always want to just immediately tell people what we have and that immediately turns people off. They want you to take an interest in them, asking them questions. And that is a, a two way, you know, street here. It's reciprocity. You're asking them questions because this isn't for everyone. And then you're going to offer it to them if they, if they seem like they fit this. So, um, these avatars are close to us often many times a day. And again, we create that board, that visual to train our brain. I know many people keep their avatar on their computer screen, on their screensaver, um, on their phone. I have a picture of mine on my phone. Um, I have a picture of her on my Facebook, like when it pops up that I just see. So it makes her more real too, if you name him or her. Name them. It makes it, it makes it so much more real. And Deb Erickson even said that, you know, oftentimes she's seen people meet someone or someone names their avatar and then they meet someone that has that exact name and all those traits. It's amazing. So once you have identified this person, we have two questions to ask. Where do I find you? You, not Lucia. Where do I find Lucia or where do I find Janet or Kate? But where do I find you? Talk to them, make them real. And if I can't find you directly, who do I know who knows you, Kate? Who do I know who knows you, Janet? Show me, show me. So pretty incredible. So again, this is just about our target market becoming more real and more focused. And when we're asking people for referrals, we can tell people in a very specific way what we're seeking. So we're all told to ask for referrals, right? Who do you know? But how would it be if you reframed that question and said, who do you know who is very coachable and teachable and really seeking a sense of purpose and health-minded? And so getting specific allows you to, um, again, reach that sphere even further by asking specifically for referrals. 
So I'm checking the timer. Ah, oh, this is great. 6.55, this is good. So in closing, guys, I just want to say something near and dear to my heart is, um, is personal development and our company's events. So in closing, if you are creating this, this magnetic pulse right now, if you're going to work on this and you're going to dive in, you're creating that energy right now. I encourage you to invite these people and put on your board. My avatar is going to join me online for convention in October. Put that on your board as well. And I'm already inviting people to that, you know, that I'm hopeful will join the business. Seek people who, invite people who are seeking that personal development, share with them. Send them a YouTube link of Aaron Brockovich speaking at Kansas City, at our Kansas City convention last summer. That was amazing, and she's going to be speaking again. Send them Dr. Brian Dixon speaking in Long Beach when we were all so excited about that Tri-Synergizer. Recreate that energy for people, guys. You're the leader, and what you put out there, what you put out there, that energy that you're creating, that vision that you're creating, that's exactly what people are going to want more of. So... Invite people to convention, run a campaign with your team maybe, and, you know, offer up a ticket or something or, you know, have a contest. But let's get people to that because that will help people to see the vision of what this company is and how big, you know, make their vision bigger. So anyway, thank you so much for for uh, having me tonight. And I'd like to just say, um, this was a real pleasure and uh, to be able to present tonight. And I'll stop the recording and just open it up for a couple of questions if anyone has any.